Well, a very good morning. It's Friday. It is the 24th. I've written August. It isn't. It's the 24th of July. I apologize for that. I'm going to discuss some. You can see the confusion. I'm going to discuss the August outlook. But uh, certainly it has uh, been a fairly cool July. That's for sure across the country. A lot of hysteria about warmth and drought and whatnot. You notice here that the two areas that um, were suffering drought for uh, multiple years there, uh, of course, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, the drought is over. But you also look at the uh, areas uh, further west that have been um, hotter, drier than normal in recent times. California, the southwest, is seeing a cool July. And a lot of the reason for that is because it's wetter than it should be. So uh, very interesting to say the least here, and uh, the very very warm water extend, extending from the uh, equatorial Pacific all the way to the California coast, allowed probably a, a near unprecedented July event, where of course we had Dolores, a once major hurricane, uh, pushing right up towards the uh, California coast. That happens later in the year, but it doesn't tend to happen in the middle of summer. And water temperatures off California are typically very cold. The cold California current, of course, run, runs down the coast. But to see this taking place and to see the amount of rain that we've seen over California in the last seven days alone is uh, nearly unheard of. Uh, many places uh, in one single rain event, one day, breaking a July record for the amount of rainfall. So really quite significant. Cool across the Great Lakes extending into the Ohio Valley, the mid-Mississippi Valley. The plain states aren't overly warm. Sure, it's heating up now, but um, the only real two areas that are, are seeing a warm July, but not excessive, is the southeast, where it's drier than normal, and, of course, the Pacific Northwest as well. You can see here the 30-day rain totals here, so a fair old amount of rain across the Midwest, uh, fields here are uh, absolutely saturated and it looks as if the pattern is going to uh, continue that way um, and of course we've had a lot more rain than you would typically see down across the southwest in the desert in July it should be dry and sunny not wet like it's been a uh, number of rain days there's been some parts of uh, the Appalachians West Virginia eastern Kentucky that has seen Upwards of 20 odd days of rain this year, this say uh, this month alone. So, really, quite a, a significant um, amount of rainfall um, for the time of the year. But this is a massive event, folks. The the El Nino is now starting to approach super territory, and uh, it's challenging 97, 98 in terms of its strength. The one very interesting factor is. That although the Pacific is technically warmer than it was back in 97, based on the fact that you've got two areas of major warmth to the north of the Nino region, of course, off Baja, off the west coast of Canada as well, um, you've got a very, very cold North Atlantic to counteract that. And that has having a big influence on uh, this, the July in eastern Canada, for example, St. John's may be talking about the coldest July on record after it experienced the hottest July last year just. And of course here across the UK, this is going to be the second month below normal across many areas. But this is this to me is the big event of July 2015. Uh, the uh, area of over 600% of rainfall across California is mind-boggling. This is uh, something you, you literally never see. At this time of the year in terms of precipitation the cfs v2 looks like this here so it's drying out over texas it's going to remain dry across the southeast that to me is where we're going to see the heat this august and it's going to pulse into the northeast back and forth i think because what we're going to have is we're going to have a counter balance here a counter interaction between the heat building naturally across the areas that are driest across the south southern plains that's going to try and left north we're going to have uh, increasing uh, troughs coming into the eastern half of the country we need to watch out off the southeast coast for development especially when you've got the tail of fronts moving over that mid to even upper 80 degree water temperature 
um, but you notice here that it has another wet look in the areas that are seeing the dress. This isn't a droid buster by any means. What I think will happen is as we push into the winter months, we're going to see significant rainfall in the areas that desperately need it. But it looks as if it's going to be a wet August across the central and northern plains and back into the Intermountain West again, drying out further east. Temperature-wise, this is what it's looking like. Warm the Pacific Northwest, extending down the West Coast and also in the Southeast. I think we're going to see warmer conditions than what this model is showing. But notice the amount of blue on the map. That is very representative of an El Nino. Even September, very little difference, really. It is looking cool, according to the model. If you haven't already, do check out the uh, August outlook for the United States. And I will have more information on the possible tropical threat uh, later on today. Have a great Friday. Bye for now.